Welcome to this how-to video on taking squeezes from in-situ cornices such as this one. The industry standard usually takes a number of hours for this to actually be completed. Uh, at Tom's we've put together a system where with the use of hot air from either a hairdryer or a paint stripping gum, you can actually complete this project easily within under one hour. The component systems are very simple to use and are in fact one-to-one -one by weight or by volume which makes them extremely easy to use and the whole kit comes ready in a box with measurable cups so it's very very simple to use. The first thing we need to do is make sure that the area that we are copying has a repeat pattern. The repeat pattern on this particular cornice runs from here to here so our aim is actually to capture this repeat pattern here all the way to the far side of here so we have in excess of the repeat pattern. The first thing we will do is place a thin skin onto the surface of this in order to capture the detail. We also need to ensure that we go across the ceiling and some way down the wall otherwise we will not be able to accurately put on the strike off angles on, uh, on our mould. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll mix up the primary skin. We'll paint that on, brush that in, heat that to set it quickly within 10 minutes easily. And then we will come back with a thixotropic layer and a supportive case that will hold the shape. So the two components that we'll be using today will be the Tom's Rappy Skin, which is a platinum cure rubber. It's designed to be used within four minutes and at room temperature will set at around about 20 minutes. But with the introduction of heat, we'll actually speed up to something between six and eight minutes, depending on how much heat it's exposed to. It's a very simple to mix system. And is in fact a one-to-one -one system. So there's no reason that you can't do this job on site without scales. And using the cups provided, you can measure equal parts. As you can see, it's quite a runny system. You should have around 200 to 250 millilitres or grams. The cups are particularly accurate, so you can trust them. Making sure that you've got the part B. And I'll bring this up to 400. Point, the clock is ticking as far as how long you have to use this product. In the cold you will have an extended mix, mixing time and using time. You should be at a complete mix there. So with a two inch bristle brush or similar start to apply. Note that this system, without its six tropic agent, will drip and run. So if you are doing this in a carpeted environment, you should take appropriate precautions for drips. So the next part of this process is using the same product again, however this time with a modifier, the Fixotropic, which is added at 5%. This will take this product from a fluid system, which you can see is very fluid, down to something which is actually more like warm butter, allowing you to get it into all the details, however at the same time not trap too much air. Mix it exactly the same way, but don't mix too much in one go or you might not get it all up on the cornice before it sets. If 
You must mix the system together before you add the thixotropic. The reason for this is that you may not be able to get the system fully mixed as the thixotropic is very fast acting and therefore you may end up with a sticky finish. Now adding an equal part of part B. Up to 400 milligrams or 400 mils. Mix in thoroughly. Now we add the thixotropic, approximately half the bottle. At first, the thixotropic will go in with not very much difference, and suddenly the mixture will come quite stiff. Using a palette knife or similar, press this material into all of the low recesses, doing your level best not to trap any air. The material is now finishing its pot life. You can tell that because it's becoming stiffer to apply. And at this point, you should stop trying to apply any further. So making a second batch to complete the top section here and here, thicken up to the ceiling section and thicken up some of this section down here, making sure that this is one smooth curve all the way up to the top so that we do not have any undercuts for a rigid support case. I'm going to make the exact same mix again, which was 200 grams or mil, 200 grams or mil of the opposing half. Mix well and add the thixotropic. Okay, so the final segment of this particular process is to produce a supportive case, which will actually keep the shape of this rather soft and thin layer of silicone. We've been careful to delete any undercut from here because this support case will be rigid and we'll need to actually come off in this direction. The resin does sediment, so it's important to shake it before you use it. Part B, however, does not sediment, so there's no need to shake that part. So first we begin by adding the part A in full, having shaken it thoroughly. As much as you can get out of the bottle, there will be some wet out, but there is a reasonable error ratio on that product. The next part to add is the marble flour. This improves the viscosity stops the resin from running out of the fibres and also helps to disperse any air. You should stir this thoroughly until the powder is completely throughout all of the resin. If you do not do that, there is a danger that the two components of the resin may not combine properly and you may get a failure to set or sticky spots or soft spots in your supportive case. You should do this for about one to two minutes. You can still see there is a small amount of sediment in the bottom here. However, the resin is in general pretty well mixed. There was a lot of powder that went into there and it's not unusual to have the odd lump here and there, but what you do not want is lots of dry spots. Now time to add the part B. Again, this is pre-measured, so all you need to do is empty the whole contents. It's much runnier than the other part, and as a result, everything comes out of the bottle very quickly. Mix until you see a solid colour. We're now going to add some fibres to this, which will make the supportive case complete. We already fluffed these fibres up, 
So take about half of one packet, separate them, put half in, mix through, making sure you get them good and wet. When the first half of your half has gone in, put the other half in. You now have about half of one bag. We supply two bags. This is because the density of this natural plant fibre varies from batch to batch. Therefore, sometimes you need more, sometimes you need less. You want something that is fairly solid and not too drippy or runny. At the moment, we still have too much liquid. So another small handful massaged in. I can now start to feel this resin beginning to warm up. That means that it's getting very close to the end of its life. But we now have a bowl which isn't sagging or really losing very much resin from it. This is about the perfect point um, that you want this material. Just gently prising this rather than go ahead like a bull in a china shop, try to break the suction seal. That's the demold of the supportive case. Now we just need to take off the silicone, we'll put this on the bench. So you can now take that back to the workshop. You have uh, enough of a repeat pattern there to replicate that over and over, join those together, and actually make a complete length of cornice from what you have there. Any defects that are on the surface of that can be remedied in the workshop. However, the profile and all of the other details are extremely difficult to model onto a bench. Thanks for watching.